thank you very much for uh, inviting me to give a to give a talk. So, so first of all, let me say that this is uh, joined with Corino uh, Chigai. And uh, uh, motivated by the question of Claudia. Close the door. And well, uh, it is about about uh, time changes of uh, of task along cycle four. Set up and um, so uh, let me just uh, um, remind uh, what is the classical recycle flow. So, classical recycle flow and just take essentially uh, PSL to R over gamma and then we take, we take uh, uh, um, 1 T 0 1. This would be HTU. This is our uh, acting acting by uh, right multiplication. And uh, and you here we have a basis of the Lie algebra that uh, we have a geodesic flow is one zero zero minus one, and you have U is uh, 0, 1, uh, 0, 0, and you have B is 0, 0, 1, 0, is the other on cycle flow. So this is the. And um, so we get a flow, so what do we know about? So, first of all, let me say something about, about uh, the, 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 the cycle flow itself. So, HTU, uh, well, it's unique ergodic, because we are in a compact situation, unique ergodic. Um, what is mixing with uh, uh, polynomial decay correlations? This is, uh, I think, Rattler. No, polynomial, but weak. <laughs> well, what do you mean by weak? Yeah. No, L2. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, polynomial decay of correlation. Yeah, I, I will say something more specific. Polynomial correlation is Ratner, and well, unique ergodicity, I think, is first number, but uh, I'm not sure. I think it's first number. Yes. In the, in the basic case. So, then, uh, in fact, there is it's mixing of all orders can be added here. That's Marcos. And um, let's see what else I want to say. Ah, uh, yes, uh, absolute continuous spectrum. So countable defect. Yeah. Countable defect, yes, yeah, that's okay. Let's just say absolute continuous spectrum. And um, then um, here I want to add uh, um, okay. results. So there are results on deviation of ergodic averages. Functions and this is uh, so. This is what we are using, and also this is uh, flaminium, flaminium myself, and we also use uh, buffetto, buffetto myself. So I will maybe say something exactly how. Work are relevant. So let me let me say something a little more specific. So so uh, so we have the L two. Well, we have the L two of the. So let me call this. Actually, let me call this space N. 
so I don't have to you know, work out. So if you look at the L2 of n, this, it's split into uh, some irreducible components. And, um, and the same can be said for infinity, so we can also split infinity in this way. And as well as, you know, intermediate spaces of intermediate regularity of subordinate spaces. And uh, this HN, it, so the representation of, of PSL to R on HN uh, can be either, so it can be either a principle, belong to the principal series, principal series, uh, complementary series, and discrete series. So, so these series are, are, are parameterized by uh, the, the value of the Casimir operators. There are two principal series, right? Am I not mistaken? Why two principal series? There are two principal series or one? Uh, one? Well, this is kind of, no? Um, it doesn't matter. No, you mean you mean you mean so these series are also two, right? Yeah, no principal. No principal series. There is only one principal series. No, no. I mean there is there is only one principal series. So this corresponds to a value of the Casimir operator uh, is uh, new, is bigger than one quarter. This is the principal series, and zero between new or new. I can say this. This is a uh, complementary series. And then there are the cases, well, there's a sequence of mu uh, less than zero. This is a discrete series. So, um, so yeah, let me, let me also assume here, just for simplicity of the whole discussion, that mu is different from one quarter, which is a sort of a, sort of a singular case that creates some unknown, some annoying. Uh, I mean, introduces some logarithm in the formulas. And so, so, so the picture is like this. That in fact, so the inside blackboard cannot be used, right? It's for decoration on top, right? Top? Yeah, not top. Yeah. Yeah. But bottom can, bottom can. So they are like. Three at the bottom, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, three at the bottom. I can use this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so so what I want to say is that okay, if you if you look at so you can look at H mu, and in H mu we have uh, the old cycle, the old cycle flow, the old cycle flow has as two in well as a space of invariant distribution. Invariant distribution. Uh, which, which, which is which is either either two dimensional and this is the case of a principal principal and complementary series or one dimensional. This is the case of the discrete series. And, uh, and in fact, uh, also the, the the behavior, so the the uh, speed of ergodicity, so ergodic averages, ergodic averages, and rate of mixing are determined are determined by by mu. So essentially, you have to look at uh, the parameter uh, nu, which is uh, the square root of one one minus four nu, and, and in fact, uh, you have two be two two possible behavior of the form one plus minus real part of nu divided by two. That turns this time to this. So so this is the kind of behavior one gets. And to be a little more precise, it goes like this. So, so let me so let me now neglect neglect 
the discrete series. Um, just because the contribution contribution is lower order, so it's not negligible. And uh, so what happens here if I if I look at a if I look at some function f and uh, I look at the integral along the cycle orbit, then this will basically will 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 do this will go like uh, uh, so there will be two distributions, so d plus minus are the invariant distributions, and this will go like d plus f uh, to t one. Uh, plus nu over 2 uh, plus d minus f t1 minus nu over 2 plus lower order. That's a very, very, very simplistic form. Of course, it's a little more, more precise, but there is a leading behavior that it, it occurs when d plus is non zero, and then there is a sub leading behavior that occurs when d plus is zero, but d minus is non zero, and then when both are zero, then in fact, uh, um, uh, in a case like this, so if we, I should say f is in h mu, or in infinity h mu. So then, in fact, if d plus f is equal to d minus f is equal to zero, then f is a cobandary. So that's the picture, and uh, and from uh, and, and there is a similar similar picture for mixing. So now the, the question is how much of this uh, generalizes to time changes. So this is the question we wanted to to approach, and uh, and the answer that we find is that uh, most of it, in fact, generalizes. So, the, so, so summarizing the results, so, so first of all, we look at time changes. So, okay, let me write this part correctly. So, we look at h t of x tau of x t equals h u uh, t, so this is x, uh, like this. And, um, yes, so this means that. The generator, the generator of our flow H to uh, is uh, the vector field U alpha, which is U over alpha, and alpha is some smooth, some smooth positive function, uh, and also we ask that the integral of alpha is one uh, over n, respect to volume. Mm -hmm. So this is the setup and. Um, Alpha, by the way, is, as usual, the derivative of tau uh, with respect to, 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 to t at t equal to zero. So, so alpha can also be written as partial of tau equal to t at t equal to zero. That's the usual thing. Um, all right, so, and essentially, the result is the following. So there is the result essentially this. So um, smooth time changes, smooth time changes have um, the same the same uh, speed of velocity and same speed of mixing. Either mixing you mean decay of uh, decay of correlations, yes. Decay of correlations. Yes. But not sufficient for us. Well, uh, no, but you but have absolutely continuous spectrum? Uh, yeah, we think that we also have so and what about spectral measures? So they have uh, absolutely continuous and absolutely <laughs> continuous spectral measures. And so, well, 
so we write that. The, the, also, the, the spectral measure also, so at first we thought we could prove that the spectral measure uh, have, a, have a bounded density with respect to, to, uh, to the back, uh, but we actually we cannot get that. We get you mean for smooth functions? Yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course. for smooth functions, yes. So, so and, and in fact the proof is quite simple. I, 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 I mean, it's so simple that uh, I'm still worrying that uh, we're doing something stupid, but uh, that seems to work. So, so yeah. So, and the spectral so the spectral measure satisfies a, a condition of the so spectral measures spectral measures uh, of uh, smooth functions sufficiently. When, whenever I say smooth is really as usual in this business, is sufficiently smooth. So it means that. There will be some uh, degree of regularity above uh, which the results are true. This is, is the case for, for the assumption on the, on the time change function. It's the same for the assumption on the, on the functions, on the test functions. So when I say smooth, I could say it's infinity, but it could just be a C... Uh, whatever. Uh, whatever. C7. But I, yeah. Let's, just, just a remark. So for smooth functions... Uh, verify something like this, so let me see, let me move it. I will copy the formula for this. So, so it's something like this. Um, so the limit as delta goes to zero plus, or, uh, no, it's something more precise. So, new f, so f is the function, smooth function of f. It's like this, mu f of uh, some interval of size delta. Um, it's going to be bounded by constant, uh, depend, depends on alpha, or whatever. Then there, there is some norm of f, and then there is uh, delta, log delta, divided by. So there is some singularity at zero that. Uh, so essentially, this says that if you stay away from 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 zero, you have this uh, uh, this uh, bound in with which contains these logarithmic terms. So first, we thought that we could just get rid of this and get some sort of a bounded uh, bounded uh, regular Nikolin derivative, but but we cannot do this. But we, and also we, we get absolutely continuous spectra, uh, spectral measures. Are these sufficient for absolute continuity? No, no, no. This is, no, not, this is not sufficient. No, this is not sufficient. But, but this, is, this is sort of a uh, sort of separate. separate. No, we get, we get, we get L2 integrability. So, so the, 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 the basic idea is this. So there is a... There is a how, how do we, how do we uh, go around this problem of integrability? So it's simply like this. So we look at co-boundaries. We look at two boundaries and prove and prove that that speed of mixing speed of so the care correlation for co boundaries is uh, is like one over t. So so I don't know if this is convincing to you, but uh, this is uh, sim simply this. So. So, if, so this implies that for cobandos the spectral measures are uh, L2, and so uh, and so the spectrum the spectral measures are absolutely continuous. So that's uh, mm -hmm. so 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 that's it. Of course, if you if you have cobandos, uh, we have the function. Right. Dense in a uh, there are two arguments. One, you can say that if you have a function, if you have a smooth function, just take its derivative, right? And then you know the spectral measure of the derivative, but the spectral from the spectral measure of the derivative, you, you go back to the spectral measure of the function, and essentially it reduces in singularity as zero. But, but uh, you still know that it's absolutely continuous in that sense. Otherwise, you say that cobandos are yeah, it's dense enough to. That's also yeah. true. Yeah, that's, that's a good statement. And I'm also very happy that you cannot remove log delta, because if you could, I would be extremely sick. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. So I should have, I should uh, I should have sent you an email while I was trying to do that. <laughs> yeah. No. I know. But I would. I would. I would be extremely suspicious. But no. It's, this uh, seems fine. This seems fine. You have some 
mild, you know, mild condition with respect to measure it by itself does not give you absolute continuity, and the absolute continuity you get from L2 argument. From L2 argument, yes. Yeah, from L2 argument. And, and specifically, I said L2 argument is specifically the rate of decay that, for the... That looks like... The argument is very simple on this side. So what is the argument? So the argument is just basically, and here I should thank uh, Livio Flaminio for attracting, pushing us in the, in the direction to look at uh, again at Marcus paper. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know here. Mm -hmm. So so key idea, the key idea is. Uh, uh, do quantitative markers <laughs> argument. So, well, I haven't, I, actually, I forgot to state, of course, uh, what, what is the argument, uh, Marcus argument for? Well, I, I, I forgot to say that uh, uh, this is a paper, so Marcus, Marcus paper on Anna's uh, I think it's 78. Uh, it proves uh, uh, that, that as smooth time changes, well, it, it proves the result that essentially contains the following smooth time changes are mixing. So let me, let me just try to sketch how it works. So I know I'm not using efficiency. Does he actually have it? Huh? In this form, in his paper? Yeah. So it's transferring of Kushnenko? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I should mention also Kushnenko also as a, as a statement of mixing uh, with, under some condition, on the, yeah. some sort of a uh, smallness condition. Yeah, no, not very large time change. Yeah, not very large time change. But, but Marcus uh, has, a, has a full statement and uh, which holds under some mild conditions of differentiability of the of the of the of the of the time change function. So it's, mm -hmm. it's but also if you take a if you take a time change which is really smooth then certainly apply. So the idea is like this. Well um, so we so if we want to prove mixings what you do is we take take a segment take a segment uh, uh, along the geodesic flow direction Direction and push it and push it under uh, the the whole cycle the the, the, the reparameterized whole cycle from cycle four. So so this means the following it means that uh, okay let me just give some notations so it means that. Uh, um, okay. Uh, so essentially, you are looking at the look, look at the curve, look at the curve of the form. Uh, so gamma. What the measurements I want to keep? Well, sigma t x. So this would be something like uh, h t uh, composed with. Uh, Phi x s at x, and here I let x s vary in the interval, say zero sigma. So, oh, I go to this. So what happens to this curve? Well, this curve gets well. There's a, there's this shear phenomenon. So these curves get actually. Very long. It moves around, and it gets very long, and it gets long in the direction of the of the of the orocycle flow. So, so the curve, so gamma sigma t x is uh, approximately. Um, an orocycle cycle arc of length of length t and so on. 
So is approximately equidistributed. And can you draw the picture? Um, so for a cycle who is greater than a cross, it should be tall, right? Tall cycle. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I can, you know, whenever I don't put U is, I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, tall, okay, I, well, I'm using T now, if you, if you allow <laughs> me. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just a time parameter on this yeah. block, right? Time parameter for the time change flow. Yeah, 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 now, now, now the, 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 the standard flow is not there, so you, when there is a standard flow, I put a U, just to stress. So, but it's not, but it's not a piece of geodesic anymore. I, I, I don't understand. You take an S piece of ju this is why I want the picture. Ta okay, take, uh, I'm not sure I can draw the picture of it. You take a piece of geodesic and you just push it with a, with a, with a, with a, with a under the reparameterized recycle flow. And then what, it, what, it, what happens is, since the time change is most, it, what it happens is still that more or less you have the same thing that happens with the, with the recycle flow. So your curve, well, your, your, your initial point moves, of course, this, this curve starts at X. So you get a curve which looks like this. It starts at x. Uh, it starts at h t of x right. and goes to h t of five. Right, but it, it, it has x. some and on cycle deviation. It's not a piece of it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not a piece. So in, in direction, in direction of geodesic, yeah. uh, geodesic, right. uh, as a, uh, of length, geodesic length is of order sigma. Mm -hmm. But or cycle length, yeah, true. It's or cycle length, length is approximately, approximately t. Right. Okay. And it lies. The other important thing is that it lies in the xu leaf. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't find a good piece of chalk. Yeah. Not very short. Is there any chalk uh, any, anywhere else? Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So it lies in the in the x u leaf in the stable in the stable or unstable or whatever in binary leaf, so it doesn't get out of that. And so now it's not quite in a, not, it's not quite exactly in a cycle, but it's not far from it. And one can actually compute exactly formulas for uh, for this curve. And uh, well, the 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 basic point is that, uh, in fact, the work with, with in the work with Bufetov, we prove results of equidistribution for for uh, for, for general curves, uh, just under under the clause they are long in the cycle direction. So so if a, if a curve is long in the cycle direction but it's not long in a, in the other direction, the equity, it, it does equidistribute the same way as a normal cycle, which is not surprising, obviously, but um, this is useful. And then. So this is the key, the key point, and uh, I mean the key, uh, the key point, the key argument. So, so, so the key idea of the argument, and then we want to make this quantitative. So, so now I have to write some formulas, and I try. To, uh, how much time do I have left? Okay, twenty minutes is some time to give you some formulas. So, um, so let's see. First of all, first of all, so we want to study. So write down, write down this curve gamma um, gamma t sigma x. So how can we write down this? Well, we want to write down the, the tangent vector. So we want to write down uh, maybe a, a, a drop x. So we want to write down d gamma sigma t ds at some s. So yeah, it's just a tangent vector. So, and uh, the, 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 the formula we get, so there's a lemma that says the following. The lemma says, well, this is just a calculation, but this tangent vector, d gamma dx, let me just uh, write this is equal to gamma, just to simplify. So d gamma dx is equal to this, it's just a v, uh, some function v t x uh, s uh, times u alpha, u alpha is generator of the time change, uh, at the point of gamma s plus uh, the, the geodesic flow, gamma s. So, and this function vt, vt xs, so it can be computed, so it's not, nothing special. Uh, this is the function integral from 0 to t of x alpha over alpha minus 1 um, 
composed with, and here I'm using to, if you allow me, because it's variable name generation. So, so um, what else? Composed with pi s x, which is the Jurassic world, in the x. So the first time will be to write down explicit formulas, and it's, oh, it's, it's, you, you compute commutators, and uh, you, you have to compute that the derivative of this curve is uh, always x, essentially in the geodesic direction, and in the orocycle direction, you see appearing this, this, uh, this function. Notice that this function here has average uh, minus 1, so, so this, in, in, this, in this notation, this function grows like uh, like minus t, so it's, it's just because we, we choose a direction rather than the other, so it's... So anyway, so start like this, and then... And then it's not hard to see that, uh, um, that in fact there is another level that says that, uh, well, just because the function is written like this, right, uh, uh, it's one can show that this function dt divided by t plus 1, this is uh, uh, essentially uh, goes to 0, is, is polynomially small. So let me not be precise with this, but it goes to 0 polynomially. This is just uh, essentially equidistribution. So, yeah, so one thing I didn't remark is that it's easy to obtain a equidistribution. Plus, plus, plus one? Yes, plus one, sorry. So it's easy to, it's easy to derive a equidistribution for the time change from a equidistribution for the, for the original flow. So that, that's the easy part. So, so it's not, not much to do there. So once we get a equidistribution for the, for the reparameterized flow, then this kind of uh, estimate is, is automatic. And... Um, so we have this, and then, and then essentially we go that we go on to to uh, study integrals of this following form. So so we have the, uh, we have a for formula which is almost immediate that says the following. So if you look at the integral from zero to sigma of f composed with h t composed with phi s x uh, in d s well, at some point x. So this is basically an integral of a function along this curve, right, with respect to the parameterization. So the, this curve is parameterized by this geodesic parameter. So it's pushed by the recycle flow, it's parameterized by the geodesic parameter. And so this is basically says that uh, uh, this is uh, equal to uh, minus 1 over t, the integral of the function f times the dual form for, to the recycle flow on this curve gamma, gamma sigma t. Um, uh, plus the integral from zero to sigma uh, of f composed with h t composed with the geodesic flow, and here we have uh, v over t, v uh, t over t plus one. So in the s. So so what is this? This is basically a trivial statement that says, well, I mean, if we if we try to write down so u, u, u hat is just u hat alpha is the dual form, dual form, dual one form. So if we try down to if we try to write down this integral along this curve, well, of course we get uh, we have to modify by the derivative of uh, of the of the parameterization, and then we, we do some some simple algebra. So basically, we get this exactly this formula. Now, what this formula says is that well, of course this is this is small, right? This is small, and uh, here we see a minus one over t. So this is also small, and uh, provided we can control this term, and and so we get the results for these integrals. So the first step is to get uh, decay estimates for. So the first, yeah, first zero order step is to get the decay estimates for integrals of this type. So integrals of the function. Um, a long curve like this. So we, here we have a geodesic flow um, of average. So, so then, so so then I, I'd like to say how do how do we get exactly mixing estimates from this? This is a, also a very simple, uh, not just a very simple trick. 
which uh, so we have to we have to be a little careful in passing from from the volume form from the invariant volume form for the geodesic flow and the invariant volume form for the reparametrizable cycle, which are of course closely related, so it's not a, it's not a big deal, but uh, but uh, uh, well, we must pay some attention to it. So there's another level that says the following. So basically, how do we go from there to, to, to mixing? So the level says the following. So let me just state it and then say a word. So if, if we want to do F composed with HT against a function G, and this is with uh, respect to the standard volume, and then to, to go to the non-standard volume, we have to modify G by, 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 just a, by just a factor, which is basically a factor alpha. So, so what we do is that we insert geodesic flow uh, on both coordinates, uh, that doesn't change anything because the volume is invariant and, ge and the geodesic flow. Then we integrate it, or average, and then we do an integration by parts. So, so that's a hard integration, right, in this kind of the, This is uh, this is L two L two uh, standard volume. Yeah, hard. Yes. Yeah, hard. Yeah. yeah. So so the formula uh, becomes like this. It's just a, so one over sigma. Uh, integral from zero to sigma f composed ht composed phi x s uh, ds and here we have g composed with phi x sigma and then there is a minus one over sigma integral from zero to sigma integral from uh, zero to s and uh, here uh, no scalar product in from zero to s, f compose ht compose with phi xs. Uh, and here we have the derivative of so xg composed with phi uh, little s. Okay, this is a little s, this is supposed to be a big s. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, there is a little ds here, comma, and then there is a big ds here. So this is really, so the idea is really like this. So the proof is like, you start by saying that if you insert a geodesic flow, nothing changes. Then you integrate. And then by parts. So in this way, essentially you, you, you from the distribution of these integrals, and assuming some smoothness in the in the in the x direction for g, you get uh, mixing estimates. Now these mixing estimates are not good enough because uh, basically they are just as good as the decay of this term. So of course this term decays. This this term is determined. The decay of this term is determined by the time change function. So. Uh, the time change function, we don't know much, we, we can just get the roughest decay, which is not even square root. So this is, this, 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 what we get from here is, is very simple, but wouldn't be enough. So there is, there is the last... Uh, enough you know, for absolute continuity, right? Huh? It wouldn't be enough for... Well, it wouldn't be enough for, it would be enough to get some, some estimates of the right. decay of correlation, but not, not uh, the yeah. same... That's piece. exactly why, uh, the same reason why Latin estimate is not enough for absolute continuity of the mixture. Well, I mean, well, the point here, for instance, if, if you have a function in a specific irreducible representation, mm -hmm. right, and maybe you know something, uh, I mean, you don't have the same rate as the as the standard or cycle flow if you do this, because the rate will be... No, but even for standard or cycle flow, it's not enough. No, no, but, uh, yeah, of course, but, but, okay, but then you have to look at co-boundaries. So, yeah, true. Yeah. That's, that's, this, I think, is a clever idea, which somehow didn't come from... So, so there is there is another idea that I didn't realize that the boundaries are dense. So, so, so there is another trick that uh, that uh, is useful and uh, is very obvious uh, if you have done some uh, some PDEs uh, is to is to do a, try to do a boost. So, so I want to get better estimates on this right on this integral. So what I do I do an integration by parts on this one. So there is a so you see that this is really kind of PD. So you and now again integration by parts. Uh, where here. 
So as you do integration by parts here with respect to S this time. So the, the, the key point is that as you do integration by parts here, you put a derivative with respect to S on this function. And the whole, the whole game, the whole thing that, that works is that when you do a derivative with respect to S on this function, it stays under control. So it doesn't do anything, anything uh, uh, annoying. And uh, S is a geodesic direction. S is a geodesic direction. So if you look at how this function is defined, and you, you, you actually can compute derivative with respect to S, uh, it happens that this derivative of this function with respect to S is, uh, is uh, very good, I mean, nicely bounded, and, uh, and so you can sort of boost up this estimate, so you can take this term and put it back to the left, this is called the booster trick, and you get, and you get uh, the following, what is it? You get the following statement, so, so you get the following lemma, by this booster trick, which is as follows. So, so in order for the booster trick to work, since so if you believe that the derivative with respect to s here is essentially is, is bounded by constant, then you need to take sigma small enough to get a small constant which allows you to, to, to do the booster trick. So, so essentially it says the following: for for sigma for sigma small enough. Uh, you have the following estimate, so the soup, uh, the soup uh, as s varies in zero sigma, so you have to take some soups to make it to make it work of the integral from zero to s of f composed with ht composed with phi s x etc in ds. So this thing is actually controlled by constant, well depends on alpha, blah blah blah, and then there is the soup. Of the absolute value of a soup again uh, s over zero sigma of the one over t the integral over gamma this is gamma s x t so I recall that this curve is obtained by pushing time t a geodesic arc of length s starting at x so and here there is f u hat alpha so there is this one form so so this is the this is the lemma. And uh, just to give you an idea of uh, how you set up the bootstrap, um, you have to take you have to take sigma so that um, well there is a constant bound in the derivative of this. So there is a constant c r, c, uh, c r alpha c alpha coming from bounding the derivative of this, and then you you have you have to ask something like this. Uh, so you have to assume that uh, the max the max of uh, this vt over t plus 1 plus this constant times sigma is strictly less than 1 so this term controls uh, the, the, the finite factor and this term, so there is 1 here and this term essentially controls the, 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 the the integral, so the term where you, you put uh, you put uh, you put an integral here. But and you, can do it, right? you can do it, right? Huh? You can do it. I mean, it's can I do it? Uh, you mean write it down? No, no. I mean you can pick such a sigma, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Because this is going this is going to zero anyway. So this is going to zero polynomial. In fact, in fact, it's not, it's not clear to me now that uh, polynomial uh, decay is really important in this argument. So so you could probably this estimate works. Even without uh, knowing polynomial decay, okay. but then once you are here, well, it's it's uh, it's not hard to see that this integral, if f is a co-boundary, this integral is bounded. So, so the, the last, so if if you if you're interested, well, first of all, first of all, um, 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 yeah, for, for 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 decay of correlation, you're almost done because now this is really a distribution estimate. And I told you how to pass from the distribution estimates to, to mixing estimates. And, uh, and uh, so the, the last thing I should, uh, I should uh, point out is that, so, so essentially, so these integrals, integral of uh, f u hat alpha uh, on, on the curve gamma, Gamma x t uh, s can be estimated <coughs> can be estimated uh, well as 
say sharply, depending, depending on the on the uh, irreducible irreducible representation, <coughs> where where I think where alpha f is. So so when you do this, you're you're really doing it for the for the time for the free price flow, so you have to take that into account. You don't look at the usual <coughs> representation where f is, but the usual representation where alpha f is. And, uh, and in particular, if f is a co-boundary, then you get uh, that the integral f u hat alpha is bounded. So, and then, then you get this uh, decay uh, one, this is one over T DK for the for the correlations and uh, uh, and you get uh, yeah. all right. So this is all. Any questions? Sir, a couple of questions. Sure. First of all, countable spectrum you get because in each you can open. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Countable spectrum. However, uh, can you show that there are no gaps? That it's the maximum maximum spectral length is the best? Because decay estimates which go in theory back are exponential. That's very far from your from your matrix, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. The only, the only way you can get from spectral theory that the spectrum is the back is by analyticity of the density function. So hmm. can you show that there are no gaps? What do you mean by no gaps? The okay. maximum spectral type is actually the back. We haven't thought about it. No. Well, that's a question. I, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, obviously a major question. Yeah. It would be extremely surprising if this way you discover something with a max, maximum spectral type not is there. You don't expect I me. Mean, even if even if such things are possible, they would come from this cubic string of Tourneau, not not from nature of the ground. But you don't know how to do that. No, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how to do it like this. Any other questions? Okay, well thanks for your <laughs> We have countable just by the